Did you know that the first patent awarded to a silicon carbide device happened way back in 1962? And did you also know that Rome Semiconductor started their first research into silicon carbide SBDs and MOSFETs over 20 years ago and went into production just a couple years later? And now, silicon carbide MOSFETs are more popular than ever before, and Rome Semiconductor has released a fourth generation of these devices. And guess what? That's exactly what we're talking about today. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Ming Su from Rome Semiconductor and I explore the benefits of Rome's fourth generation of silicon carbide MOSFET. We investigate the switching performance, capacitance improvement, and ease of use of this new silicon carbide MOSFET family. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Rome Semiconductor. Hi, Ming. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hi, Amelia. So, Ming, we're investigating the fourth generation of Rome's silicon carbide MOSFETs today. But before we get started, what all will we be covering today? So first, we'll introduce the Rome's silicon carbide product and our technology development history. And then we will focus on the fourth generation, which is our latest silicon carbide MOSFET, which features low loss and it will be easy to use with high reliability. Finally, we'll talk about the discrete products available for new designs. Excellent. Now, silicon carbide devices are certainly not a new thing for Rome, right? You guys have been working on these type of devices for quite a while. Absolutely. So we started developing silicon carbide technology over 20 years ago. And over this period, we developed silicon carbide diodes, MOSFET, and packaged products. We have been leading the commercialization of some of the products, and also we acquired Cycrystal which is one of the leading substrate makers of silicon carbide based in Nuremberg, Germany. We now have a vertically integrated production system for our silicon carbide devices, and we can see it with a substrate wafer. We have it come from Germany, our subsidiary, Cycrystal, and then we have multiple locations in Japan to process the wafers into silicon carbide diodes and MOSFET devices. We have packaging facilities in Japan and also other countries in Asia. We can offer substrate, devices, and packaged products, all from Rome. Fantastic. Now, Ming, how have we gotten to where we are today with silicon carbide MOSFETs? So all companies have their device technology improving generation over generation. So with Rome, we started with the second generation silicon carbide MOSFET, which uses a planar gate structure. And with the third gen, we adopted a double trench structure which is a Rome proprietary design, and that allow us to improve the specific arm resistance by 50%. So that is an important figure merit because for the same chip size, the RDS arm is reduced by 50%. And that also means the conduction loss for carrying the same load current is reduced by half. Now we are at the fourth generation, which uses optimized double trend structure, we are already developing the next-gen technology, which will further improve this arm resistance figure of merit. On the production side, we have been increasing the wafer diameters to enable lower cost, higher production capability. We are at 6-inch wafer production for the devices. We are on track to make 5th-gen silicon carbon MOSFET on 8-inch wafers. On the other hand, for a single chip, there's also a demand from the market to increase the chip area. So larger current can be supported for one chip. We have been using about 25 millimeter die for high current applications since 2015. And in the very near future, that die area will increase significantly to approximately up to 50 millimeter square. So overall, what do you see are the biggest benefits of these new devices? The new fourth generation silicon carbon MOSFET will have three main features. It will have low losses, it will be easy to use, and comes with high reliability. For the low losses, we'll start with the specific RDS on value as well. The third gen silicon carbon MOSFET 
improved from the second gen by switching to the trench ceiling cover MOSFET design. And with the fourth gen optimized double trench structure, there's another 40% reduction for both 1200 volt and 650 or 750 volt class devices. So Ming, can we take a closer look at the Aron you mentioned? How do these new MOSFETs stack up against other solutions on the market? So when we released the fourth generation silicon carbon MOSFET, we did a benchmark study comparing our RDS on against what's available on the market. And we found for both 750 volt and 1200 volt class devices, we offer the lowest specific RDS on compared to others. This applies to both room temperature and 175 degrees C's. So this technology allows us to offer low conduction loss at low cost. So what kind of performance are we talking about when it comes to switching? So switching performance is also a very important part of the low loss feature. We compared our fourth generation silicon carbon MOSFET against others and found we can reduce the switching loss by 13 to 49 percent, assuming the switching speed is selected so that the surge voltage in VDS is the same for all devices. In this case, it's 1200 volt class and we set the surge voltage limit to 960 volt. So what about the capacitance, Ming? What kind of improvements have you guys made in this arena? The capacitance is a very important consideration for the switching process, especially the CGD capacitance or CRSS, because this capacitance determines the DVDT switching speed in the switching process. In the first gen, as you can see in this chart, the CRSS has been reduced significantly by approximately one order of magnitude compared to the third gen silicon carbide MOSFET. So this allows us to switch faster even without increasing the surge voltage on the silicon carbide MOSFET. Another benefit of reducing the CRSS capacitance is to help reduce the ratio between CRSS and CISS. And that ratio is important to avoid self turnaround on phenomena in the switching process. So switching speed is certainly an important thing to keep in mind here, right? What does that look like for this fourth gen of silicon carbide MOSFETs? This slide shows the switching waveforms of a third gen and fourth generation silicon carbide MOSFET. And we can see with the new design, we can achieve higher DVDT and DIDT switching speed in the fourth gen device. The fourth gen also exhibit much smaller turn on and turn off losses which help us increase the switching frequency without sacrificing efficiency. That makes sense. So if people want to start to replace earlier generation devices with the latest, what benefits could they expect? So the new design depends on the priority of the system. For example, in this case, the application focuses on conduction loss. Then we could recommend replacing the older generation device with a new generation of similar chip area. Because of the improved specific RDS on, that means the on resistance is much reduced. In this case, the conduction loss could be reduced by approximately half. This allows the device to run much cooler compared to the previous generation, and this simplifies the thermal management. That's a great improvement. So what if people want to use smaller chips and reduce their system cost? The new fourth generation silicon carbon MOSFET allows reducing the chip size and reducing the component cost for the system. For example, if we replace the third gen silicon carbon MOSFET with a similar RDS sound part, a 40 milliohm gen 3 part with a 36 milliohm. In this case, we will not see much improvement in conduction loss because the RDS on is very similar. But we will see improvement in switching loss in addition to the cost reduction due to the chip size reduction. The switching loss depends on the capacitance design of the MOSFET. The smaller chip size further reduces the capacitance and allows us to reduce the switching loss even more. The improved switching loss will help improve the overall efficiency and allows the customers to downsize the heat sink. In this case, this can make the system more compact. So Ming, is it easy to design the gate drive for these silicon carbide MOSFETs? Yes. So many of our customers try to replace silicon IGBTs with the more efficient silicon carbide MOSFET. 
Silicon IGBTs conventionally use 15 volt as the drive voltage for on state. In the fourth generation silicon carbon MOSFET, we support a range of on state voltage from 15 volt to 18 volt, allowing the compatibility with silicon IGBTs. The same cannot be said for the third generation because by using a 15 volt drive voltage, the on resistance for the third generation will increase by 30%. That's too much losses to pay. But for the fourth generation, the increase in RDS on is less than 10%. Depending on the converter operation, if the converter is switching at high frequency, then you will barely see the difference in the efficiency by changing the drive voltage from 18 volt to 15 volt. On the other hand, for turning off the silicon carbon MOSFET, we do not require a negative gate to source voltage. The reason that no negative voltage is required for the gate drive is because we have a very low risk for self-turn-on in the switching process. So what is self-turn-on? In a bridge circuit, when you try to turn on one of the switches, the other switch, silicon carbon MOSFET, is supposed to be off all the time in the switching process. But the turning on of the silicon carbon MOSFET will introduce a voltage rise across the drain and source of the other MOSFET. That rapid rise in voltage could influence the gate to source voltage of the offset silicon carbon MOSFET and cause the gate to source voltage to exceed the threshold voltage of the device and turn on the silicon carbon MOSFET accidentally. When the gate of the offset silicon carbon MOSFET is accidentally turned on, this could introduce a shoot-through current across both devices and increase the switching loss in the process. To avoid that problem, there are two factors that we have to consider. One is the threshold voltage of the gate. The higher the threshold voltage, the less likely the device will be accidentally turned on. In Rome's fourth generation silicon carbon MOSFET, the threshold voltage is 2.8 volt minimum, higher than our competitors. Another factor to avoid the self-turn-on phenomenon is to optimize the capacitance ratio between CRSS and CISS. With the smaller ratio between CRSS and CISS, the fluctuation on the gate to source is reduced. So Ming, are there any other aspects of this newest generation of MOSFETs that you'd like to point out to my audience? Uh, yes. So when we improve the RDS on of the silicon carbon MOSFET, there's often a trade-off in short-circuit ruggedness. The measures to improve the chip design and reduce the RDS on usually result in higher short-circuit current when such an event occurs. This is true when we change from the second generation to the third generation silicon carbon MOSFET. But for the new generation, the trade-off relationship is improved. We are reducing the RDS on by 40%, but the short circuit with then time is not sacrificed. In this example, we tested the fourth gen silicon carbon MOSFET against two other competitors and found we have longer short circuit with then time compared to the two other products. Okay, so Ming, overall, what classes of products are available for people to take advantage of this new generation of silicon carbide MOSFETs? So the new 4th gen silicon carbon MOSFET comes with low RDS on, low power loss, it's easy to use with high reliability, and it is offered in 750 volt and 1200 volt voltage classes. The RDS on rating range from 30 milliohm to 65 milliohm for 750 volt and 18 milliohm to 90 milliohm for the 1200 volt class. We have three standard discrete options available for the through hole type. We have TU247, both the three lead and four lead versions. For the surface mount type, we have TU263 with seven lead. So Ming, what specific options do we have in this family? So for the fourth gen silicon carbon MOSFET discrete products, we have six different RDS on levels for each voltage class. For 750 volt, that is 30 milliohm to 65, and 1200 volt is 80 milliohm to 90. For all these RDS sounds, we have them in general grade, and most of them are available in automotive grade as well. For the through hole type, we have three lead and four lead versions, with the four lead version supporting a Kelvin connection for the gate drive, which is helpful for the switching losses. On the other hand, for surface mount, we have TO263, which is also available for 750 volt and 1200 volt. General grade are available for industrial applications, 
and most part are available for automotive design as well. So, Ming, this is a lot to take in today. Can you recap your main points for me? Sure. So we have released the fourth generation silicon carbon MOSFET with optimized double trend structure, and the new device features industry-leading low specific iron resistance, and we are not sacrificing short circuit within time. The switching performance is much improved by approximately 50% because we improved the device capacitance of the design. The device will be user-friendly, allowing gate drive voltage ranging from 15 volt to 18 volt for on state, and there's no need to turn off the device with a negative gate to source voltage. We have 750 volt and 1200 volt discrete standard products available for new designs now. Excellent. Well, Ming, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Rome Semiconductor. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.